We started to look at a lesser known volume based indicator last time called the Market Facilitation Index. And we started to consider the intelligence that this provides about what's happening in the markets. This time, we take this to another level by looking at the calculation and also showing how this feeds into the interpretation of the information the indicator provides us with. Understanding how this indicator works behind the scenes means that you'll be able to utilize it to your advantage so much more effectively. I've said on many occasions before, using indicators is not simply a case of putting them on a chart and looking for signals. It's the knowledge of how each indicator is constructed and a thorough understanding of the intelligence that that indicator provides that will set apart those traders that can use them to their advantage from those traders that will never have any success. And there is no exception with the market facilitation index. In fact, I would consider it more important for this indicator than most others. Let's now take a detailed look into the workings of this rather unique indicator. So last time we looked at how this is a volume based indicator, like many of the others we've looked at, but with a significant difference, both in terms of how the calculation is performed, but mostly in terms of how the intelligence is delivered to the trader. You see, I consider this to be a multi-dimensional indicator that looks at two different factors behind the market, each of them having two states, meaning that in total we have four possible combinations. And each of these states is given a color, which signifies what's taking place in the market at that time. This time it gets really interesting because we're going to start looking at the rationale behind these four states or colors. And to do that, we have to understand what the calculation is. Now, the whole purpose of this episode is to allow you to gain a thorough understanding of that intelligence provided by the Market Facilitation Index. So we looked last time at how this indicator appears on a chart, and you can see that at the bottom here. So we have bars of varying sizes, but also each bar carries a color. And the broad brush reasoning for the indicator we summed up as follows. It helps to determine the willingness of the market to move the price, or for the participants in the market to move that price. And as I said last time, I'll be going into a lot of detail around what this means in practice, and we start that today. Now, the calculation behind this indicator is actually very simple. It simply takes the high and the low values from the price bar at time t and divides that by the volume at time t. And it's the value of this calculation that then goes to give us the size of the bar, but not the color. So what is it that's used to determine the color of the bar? Well, for this, we have to look at the combination of two factors. The first is the change in the MKFI value itself. So in other words, has a bar increased from the previous bar or decreased? And then the second factor is the volume itself. So even though the volume plays a part in the calculation of MKFI, we also look at it independently and consider whether the volume itself has increased from the previous bar or decreased. And that, of course, gives us four different combinations. And that determines whether we see a green, brown, blue or pink bar. And they, of course, represent these states known as green, fade, fake and squat. So let's now play these through in terms of what we learned last time. And we'll start with the green state. So we learned that there were certain conditions that were required in order for this state to exist. And that was we could see an increasing number of traders entering the market 
and also we could see the price being driven strongly. So how are those conditions measured using this indicator? Well, here we've got the equation, which is the high minus the low divided by the volume. And as we saw in the previous table, if the market facilitation index has increased, so in other words, the current bar is more than the previous bar, then this has gone up and this meets the first criteria. This informs us that the market price is being driven strongly. And then secondly, if we look at the volume and we're also looking for an increase here, this tells us we're seeing an increase in the amount of trading activity and probably the number of traders that are entering the market. So if both of these have increased, the conditions are met and we have a green state. And the information that this then provides for us is given here in the indications section, but we covered that last time, so I'm not going to go through that again. Let's now go on to the next state, which is the fade state or the brown colored bars. And here the conditions are quite different, the opposite in fact. And so what we're looking for here from the calculation is a visible decrease in the market facilitation index, but also a decrease in the volume. And it's these two factors that provide these conditions that there are not many new traders entering the market and so trading activity is low, but also we're not observing any strong directional move in the market because there appears to be this loss of interest in this asset at this moment in time. Then on to the blue state or the fake state and here we're looking for a difference in opinion between the market facilitation index and the volume. So if the indicator value has gone up, when the volume went down, this provides those necessary conditions to classify this bar as fake. So in other words, we're seeing increasing movement given by the indicator's value, but the volume that sits behind it is actually very low. And as we've seen in our analysis of volume previously, that means that this particular price move can't be trusted and is likely to be short-lived and fake. Then finally, we come on to the fourth state, which is pink and the squat state. And here, the conditions that are required are exactly the opposite of the fake state that we've just looked at. So here, we're looking for a decrease in the indicator's value while we see an increase in the volume. Now, if you remember what I likened this to previously was a spring being wound up. And while you're winding that spring up, it's gaining energy, but the movement is very low. Just like the fact that we see a small price movement on the chart. But as soon as that spring is released, all of that energy is released and there's a big movement on the spring. And so, as I said last week, this is often associated with powerful breakouts. Okay, so hopefully this is now beginning to make sense in terms of how the market is classified into these four different states and the reasoning or the rationale behind what that actually means in practical terms. But to solidify that knowledge, we need to take to actual charts and put this indicator into practice. And that's what I'm going to be doing in the next episode. Now this, of course, is where all of that theory begins to make real sense. And often, seeing an indicator put into practical use is the thing that enables you to get that full understanding of the signals that these indicators are actually providing. So be sure to tune in for that. If the episode's already available, then you'll see it top right now. If not, please subscribe and you won't miss its release. But now, until next time, trade wise, trade safe.